this lecture is on simple gas laws and the ideal gas law. There are four variables that will be used in these gas laws in supporting the properties of gases. Recall gases have these properties. One, indefinite volume. Two, indefinite shape. Three, compressible. Four, assume the shape of the container. And five, large spacing between particles. The four variables to be studied are A, pressure, B, volume, C, temperature, and D, amount of substance. Bohr's law states that the pressure of a gas is inversely proportional to its volume. Both T and the amount of gas are constant. In simple words, as P increases, V decreases by the same factor. Bohr's law equation is P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. Here is a plot of V versus P showing a curved figure between variables supporting the inverse relationship between them. This plot here shows the linear relationship between V and 1 over P. A sample problem involving Boyle's law is a gas has a volume of 500 cubic cm at a pressure of 700 mmHg. What volume will it occupy if the pressure is increased to 800 mmHg with the temperature remaining constant? Given we have V1 is 500 cubic cm, P1 is 700 mmHg, and P2 is 800 mmHg, one needs to solve for V2. We use the Boyle's Law equation and solve it for V2 by plugging in all values. V2 equals 437 cubic cm. In checking the answer, since the pressure increased by a factor of 1.17, the volume must decrease by a factor of 1.17 in order to support Boyle's law. In looking at the different units of temperature in studying gases, they are Celsius, Kelvin, and Fahrenheit. Gases expand when heated and contract when cooled. So there is a relationship between volume and temperature. Gas molecules, if heated, will lead to a larger kinetic energy in which they will strike the surface faster with more force. So additionally, there is a relationship between pressure and temperature. In order for the relationships to be proportional, the temperature must be measured on an absolute scale. When doing gas problems, always convert your temperatures to kelvins. K equals the temperature of in Celsius units plus 273. If your temperature is in Fahrenheit, then to get it expressed in Celsius units, it's 5 over 9 or 0 0.556 times the difference between the temperature of the given Fahrenheit to minus 32. STP is a common reference point for comparing conditions of a substance. STP stands for standard temperature and pressure where the pressure is one ATM and the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, which equals 273 Kelvin units. Charles Law states that volume is directly proportional to temperature. P and the amount of substance for the gas are held constant. In other words, as T increases, V also increases. When working with this law or any law involving temperature, T in Kelvin units equals T in Celsius units plus 273. Charles also states that V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. 
absolute zero is a theoretical temperature at which a gas would have zero volume and no pressure. By extrapolation, absolute zero is when T equals zero Kelvin units, which equals negative 273.15 Celsius units, which equals negative 459 Fahrenheit units. Here is a graph showing a plot between volume and temperature where a linear relationship is illustrated here. A sample problem involving Charles Oyes, a gas occupied a volume of 200 cubic cm at zero Celsius units. What volume will it occupy at 100 Celsius units? Given we have V1 is 200 cubic cm, T1 is zero Celsius units, and T2 is 100 Celsius units, we need to solve for V2. First, convert temperatures to Kelvin units. So T1 and T2 are after adding 273 to each equals 273.15K and 373.15K respectively. Now using the Charles Law equation and solve over V2 after plugging in all values, V2 equals 273 cubic CM. Since the temperature of the system increases, the volume must also increase in accordance to Charles Law. The combined gas law is a combination of Boyle's Law and Charles Law. Boyle's Law shows the relationship between pressure and volume at constant temperature. Charles Law shows the relationship between volume and absolute temperature at constant pressure. The two laws can be combined together to give a law that predicts what happens to volume of a sample of gas when both pressure and volume change, as long as the amount of gas stays constant. The combined gas law is P1 times V1 divided by T1 equals P2 times V2 divided by T2. A sample problem involving the combined gas law is the volume of the gas is 200L at 12 degrees Celsius at 750 mmHg. What volume will it occupy at 40 degrees Celsius and 720 mmHg? Given we have V1 equals 200L, T2 equals 12 degrees Celsius, P1 equals 750 mmHg, T2 equals 40 degrees Celsius, and P2 equaling 720 mmHg, the question is how to solve for V2. First, express the temperatures for T1 and T2 in Kelvin units, which are 285.15K and 313.15K. Next, using the combined gas law, rearrange and solve for V2 plug in all the numbers and it turns out that V2 equals 229L. In looking at the final answer, it makes sense because since the pressure decreased and the temperature increased, the final volume must also increase in accordance to the combined gas law. Avogadro's law states that volume is directly proportional to the number of gas molecules. Both P and T are constant. The more gas molecules present, the larger the volume. Additionally, 
equal volumes contain equal number of molecules independent on the identity of the gas. Avogadro's law is V1 divided by N1 equals V2 divided by N2. Here is a graph showing a plot between volume of a gas as a function of the amount of substance. One thing to know is the molar volume of a gas at SCP. It is here that one mole of any gas at SCP occupies a volume of 22.4 L or 22.4 liters. Here are three balloons that have the same pressure and temperature. So therefore, one mole of helium, one mole of neon, and one mole of carbon dioxide all have 22.4 L. A sample question is, what volume of O2 gas is occupied by 48.0 G of O2 at SCP? If we take the mass of 48.0 G of O2 and divide it by 32.0 G, the molar mass of O2, and multiply it by the molar volume at SCP, the volume is 33.6 L. A sample problem involving Avogadro's law is 4.0 G of helium occupies a volume of 20 liters. What volume of helium is occupied at an amount of 1.50 moles? Given we have M1 equals 4.0 G, V1 equals 20.0 L, and N2 equals 1.50 moles, in order to solve for V2, first, we need to know how many moles are in 4.0 G of HE. In this case, 4.0 G of HE equals 1.0 mole of HE as N1. Using the Avogadro's law and rearranging for solving V2, it equals 30 L. Since the amount of gas increased, so would the volume of the gas in accordance to Avogadro's law. The gay lussacs law states that pressure is directly proportional to the temperature of the gas particles in Kelvin units. Both V and N are constant variables. The gay lussacs law equation is P1 divided by T1 equals P2 divided by T2. Here is a graph showing a plot between the pressure of a gas and temperature. A sample problem involving the gay lussacs law is a sample of xenon at 25 degrees Celsius at 740 mmHg is cooled to give a pressure of 620 mmHg. What is the final temperature of xenon at a pressure of 620 mmHg? Given T1 is 25 degrees C, P1 equals 740 mmHg, and P2 equals 620 mmHg, we need to solve for T2. First, solve for T1 by adding 273.15 to the initial temperature, which equals 298.15 K. Then using the Gay-Lussac's law, rearrange to solve for T2, and after plugging in all known values, it equals 250 K. To express the final temperature in Celsius units, take the temperature in Kelvin units and subtract 273.15 from the value or a final temperature of negative 23 degrees Celsius. Since the pressure decreased, the temperature must also decrease in accordance to the gay lussacs law.
by combining the gas salts, we can write a general equation. R is called the universal gas constant. The value of R depends on the units of PV, N, and T. We will use either 0 0.0821 atmosphere L over mole K or 62.4 MMHG L over mole K and convert P to ATM or MMHG and V to L. Use the ideal gas law when you have a gas at one condition and use the combined gas law when you have a gas whose condition is changing. The ideal gas law is PV equals NRT, where R equals PV over RT. Ideal gas law example one is the hydrogen gas in a 2.00L steel cylinder at 25 degrees C was under a pressure of 4 ATM. How many moles of H2 were in the cylinder? Given V equals 2L, T equals 25 degrees Celsius, and P equals 4 ATM, we need to solve for N. First, convert 25 degrees Celsius to Kelvin units by adding 273 to the value for a final temperature of 298 Kelvin units. Now, with the ideal gas law, solve for N, which equals PV over RT. Plug in all the numbers, including R equals 8. 0.0821 L ATM over mole K, N equals 0 0.33 mole. Ideal gas law example two is a 25.0 L cylinder contains 14.2 moles of helium gas at 40 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure of the helium gas? Given V equals 25 L, T equals 40 degrees Celsius, and N equals 14.2 mole, we need to solve for P. First, convert 40 degrees Celsius to Kelvin units by adding 273 to the value for a final temperature of 313 Kelvin units. Now with the ideal gas law, solve for P, which equals NRT divided by V. Plug in all the numbers, including R equals 0 0.0821 L ATM over mole K. P equals 14.6 ATM. Here are some review exercises for you to work on. Solve each of these problems with the appropriate law. A, the volume of a dry gas is 50L at 20 degrees Celsius and 742 mmHg. What volume will it occupy at STP? The hydrogen gas in a two liter cylinder at 25 degrees C is under a pressure of four ATM. What amount of H2 is in the cylinder? And the volume of a gas is 520L at a pressure of 750 mmHg. What volume in liters will it occupy at 710 mmHg? Assume the temperature is constant. For the remaining part of this lecture are solutions to review exercises or problems. Please view only after completing these exercises. Seven.